So when we talk about Vincent's first indications of having the mental and physical gifts to perform well in the sport of gymnastics, which is our family business, let me take you back um, a bit. So Carmen and Vincent are 14 months apart. Uh, Vincent was born in 2009. So let me paint a picture and put it all into context. At that time, I was really displeased with USA Gymnastics. Dominique's book, Off Balance, had just been published, became a New York Times bestseller. And while she'd always been kind of blacklisted for her opinions um, about treatment of the athletes and, and possibly unnecessary uh, abuse and suffering, uh, she was treated very poorly. So in 2009, I really selfishly did not want my children to have to do anything with the competitive program at USA Gymnastics. I always knew that our kids would start with gymnastics. It's the periodic table of elements for sports, a great foundation for anything that you choose afterward. But I was really against the idea of having either of my children involved in the competitive USA Gymnastics sphere. So I was swimming upstream for years, saying, look, they can do it recreationally. I love the sport of gymnastics. Ironically enough, everything positive, everything great in my life is somehow tied to gymnastics, either directly or indirectly. But when Vincent started competing at the age of four, I was really resistant to it. But then I just started seeing that this young child had the physical and the mental attributes to succeed. Aggression is, is an important attribute for any athlete. He had that in spades. He has the genetic pedigree. You know, we saw that, obviously, the physical gifts. Mentally, he's able to adapt. He's able to, to, to adapt to certain situations. Uh, he has good coaching. I think that I'd be undermining my role as a coach if I told you that great coaching didn't have uh, a role in this. Uh, but as a child, you know, our 23 and me, our 23 and me that Dominique and I did both said that we have the gene for elite athletes. So you start going down the line of all of these things and he certainly has the attributes to succeed in the sport. Vincent definitely wants to go to the LA 2028 Olympics. It will be his first age eligible Olympics. And how ironic, it's so many years later after his mom was at the Summer Olympics and this is the first Summer Olympics back home. So I'm pretty excited to see what happens. I absolutely want what my son wants for himself. And if it's going to the Olympics, I am there to be full and center, 100% supportive and guiding that training the best that I can. But my husband is truly the coach. He's the head coach for our son. That's better. Ah, uh, now we're talking. That was virtuous. That was virtuous. Good, be done, be done. Vincent has made it very clear that he has uh, high aspirations in this sport. And I have the credentials to do it and I can't think of anybody who is more qualified and who will protect him and shield him uh, through his apprenticeship through this sport. So remember, this is all a process. Last year, you, you know, it was emotional because it was very difficult. It was challenging. This year, there will be challenges, but I want to see your growth and, and not getting so emotional with things because you know in the end, it's all going to work out. It's all part of this plan. We're doing everything that we need to do to get you to your destination. So I want you to remember that as you're training over these next several months because I want you to feel calm. Even if it's not going your way, we're not going to get rattled. We're not going to get emotional and let it ruin the rest of the day. We're going to say, ah, I remember this. This is when I meet a little bit of a challenge and things get tough. I feel a little bit of stress. You're going to let that go. This season, I want to see that bulletproof Vincent that I know is out there. That doesn't mean it's not going to be hard, but I want, to sh I want you to show yourself and show me that you can control those emotional states. When I think back to Ohio State, those were 
some of the best years of my athletic career. Uh, I was a junior national team member at Ohio State. Uh, we won a national championship in 1996, as well as Big Ten titles in 1996 and 1997. Uh, I had the honor uh, of team captain bestowed upon me for my last two years at Ohio State, and I, I still remain firmly uh, involved with Ohio State as their uh, team announcer for the men's gymnastics meets. I'm on their board, which is the Stronger Together program to ensure that there are these opportunities for male gymnasts in years to come. I think in recent years, children's sports have been so overemphasized that kids have specialized way too soon, which not only creates burnout mentally, but physically the kids are worn out. Children are getting operations that once young adults were getting. Labral tears in the shoulder, Tommy John surgery on the elbow, those should not be happening in 12 and 13 year old children, but we've seen that. So our goal is really to, to weave our very rich fabric of athleticism and different interests. Vincent is into wrestling. He's into playing chess. He loves mathematics. He loves drawing. And so we are making sure that he has this, again, rich fabric of other interests to ensure that he doesn't burn out physically or mentally. So we're just going to continue to, to smoke the long cigar or make sure that this sauce is at a very slow simmer we don't want to turn up the heat too soon. You'll burn the sauce. So we're making sure that that sauce is on this nice warm simmer and that everything works in perfect timing. So I spend just under 12 hours of training a week, but the time we spend in the gym is very concentrated and we always have a purpose. Yeah, I think people are shocked to hear how few hours we spend in the gym. You know, in gymnastics, we have this culture where it's not uncommon for a 12 year old to be training 30 to 40 hours in the gym. That's not to say that he's not working hard. As Vincent said, we have a purpose to every single workout. Every minute means something. And those concentrated sessions of deep work, I think are gonna set him apart uh, and go a long way as far as keeping him fresh mentally and physically as we approach prime time. When my dad is coaching me, I listen to just about everything he says because I know he wants the best for me and he knows a lot about the sport. So. so I know that this is a brand new routine, but it focuses on the fundamental movements, which you know, the fundamentals serve as the trunk of that tree and all the branches, all the complicated advanced techniques branch off of that. So what we're gonna focus on for these next few months is simply the precision and, and, and making certain that this routine is completely polished by, by the end of November. So you've got a great start, you look great out there, and now we just have to tighten the bolts a little to make it look really, really good come November. Our coach-athlete, father-son relationship, I have to say it is, even as a 12-year-old, it's more of a collaboration than it really is um, a dictatorship where I'm, providing him with marching orders and he needs to follow them. I think we see that a lot in our sport. But um, what makes our coach-athlete relationship, I think, unique is for the last three years, I really ask a lot of Vincent. I ask, how do you feel? And we really tailor workouts onto what he feels he can handle that day. Now, as, as a coach, I need to draw out sometimes those performances when he feels he cannot do them. But I think we have a great collaborative approach to this. So I do watch videos of other male gymnasts and I also watch videos of my mother. Uh, when I watch videos of my mom, it's inspiring because it just makes that Olympic dream more realistic. And she broke age barriers and I wanna be an Olympic champion too. I think the approach my husband and I take is that if you want this to happen, as far as the Olympic dream, it can happen for you. And I think when you have that mindset and motivation, like you're so driven on that path, I know it was like that for me, that there was nothing gonna stop me. I wanted to get there and everything, and every single day you live, breathe, and you know, dream it. So it's one of those things where if you don't want to do it, we're fine with that. Find something else. Just find another dream. Find another passion. But if you do, you have to be all in.